Good morning, church. How are you today? All right, good, good. Hey, um, one, two, three, how's that? That's a little bit better. I'm going to, I think I, I can speak in this area here as, as well. Um, I'm glad to be here. Is anybody else glad to be in God's house today? Yes? Yeah. So when Mike said earlier, it kind of feels like Florida, right? Anybody say an amen to that, right? Um, but if you said amen to that, that you've never been to Florida. <laughs> let, me just, let me just say that. Um, this is paradise compared to Florida when it gets humid in Florida. But uh, we're, we're all blessed to be here in God's house. And like Mike said, we're working on this series all about money. Everybody say, I love talking about money. I love hearing what God has to say about money. I never lie in church. <laughs> So I know that, um, well, so we planted our church about two years ago, a little, little more than two years ago, uh, but before we planted Engage Community Church, we were here for about six weeks. My, my launch team came and spent about six weeks with your church because we wanted to get used to the setup and tear down and all that kind of stuff and learn what we could learn. And while I was here, I noticed that Eric's got this habit in preaching. I don't know if he's broken this habit but he's got this habit in preaching where he always introduces a joke before he actually tells the joke. Does he still do that? Does he still do that? Okay. So I, I decided to kind of follow suit. I went in Rome, right? Went in Rome, so I'm here. So I'm about to tell you a joke, okay? Um, so there's a story about this, this uh, fundraiser for a, a nonprofit, and she got wind of this very wealthy person in this town that she, she was supposed to be raising funds in, and, and she checked on him, and, and she found out that this, even though this person was very, 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 very wealthy, he never, ever in his entire life, never did he give to charity. And so she did her research on him a little bit more, wanted to find out how he made his money and you know, what motivated him, things like that. And then finally she got up the nerve to give him a call, and she calls him up and says, hey, I, you know, I'm just I'm raising money for this, this cause. It's a great cause. Do you think it's a great cause? He says, yeah, I think it's an, an, an amazing cause that you're raising money for. And she says, I just, you know, I looked at what you do and, and I noticed that you don't give to anything. Would you consider giving to us? I mean, you, you've, God's given you, blessed you generously and maybe would you consider giving to this cause that you think is a great cause? And he says, well, in all of your research, did you happen to find out that my mom has been in hospice for the last six months and, and, um, and you know, the, her bills are racking up there? Uh, did, did your research show you that? And she goes, well, no, no, I didn't, I didn't catch that. He said, did, did your research also show you that my brother-in-law got laid off two years ago and, and um, he's, he's been having a hard time making ends meet all that time? He goes, she goes, no, no, um, my research didn't show me that either. Did your research show you that um, I have a niece who's, who was in a terrible car accident about five years ago and now she's in a wheelchair and, and um, you know, she needs all kinds of medical assistance and needs help? And, and she goes, no, I, I, that research didn't tell me that. And, and he says, well, if I won't give to them, what makes you think I'd give to you? <laughs> So guess what I'm talking about today? I'm talking about giving, okay? I'm talking about giving. We're, we're in this series. We're talking about what the Word says about money, and, and I'm sure Pastor Eric has shared this with you, and I shared it with you a couple of weeks ago, but uh, Scripture has a bunch to say about money. As a matter of fact, Jesus talked more about money than he did about heaven. That should make us go, hmm, right? Everybody, let's do that together, right? One, two, three. Hmm, why would Jesus talk about money more than heaven? And, and the reason for that is very simply this, that God knows and Jesus knows that it's not Satan, it's not the enemy, it's not spiritual darkness that is the top competitor for your heart. It's money, it's money. The enemy uses money, it uses uh, our, our, our wealth as a competitor for our heart against God. And so that's why Jesus talked about money so, uh, so much. And, and in this series, we're basically looking at five different things that we can do with our money. And the first one, uh, week number one, we were talking about making money, right? So that's, we, we gotta make money, definitely gotta make money. Um, and then we've kind of been swapping messages, but you can make money, you can keep money, you can spend money, you can give money, and you can save money. So we're talking about those five things through this, this series. Today I'm going to be talking about giving money. Now, uh, I'm going to dive right into Scripture really quickly, but before 
I hit the scripture. I want to give you a little historical context so you know that we're, where we're coming from. In the Bible, in the Old Testament, uh, which is basically what the Hebrews call their Bible, the Torah, uh, it, it gives a history of the nation of Israel. And the nation of Israel had this incredible relationship with God. As a matter of fact, uh, the, the history of Israel shows us that God always starts with relationship, not with rules. Anybody here big on relationship over rules? Yeah, I, I'm big on relationship over rules. But, uh, but because the nation of Israel was in relationship with God. God says, I love you so much. I want to make sure that you're cared for, that you're taken care, for, uh, taken care of. And so he said, I'm going to take you out of, slaver, out of slavery and I'm going to bring you to the promised land. Everybody say promised land. promised land. As a matter of fact, the Bible is really clear about this, that, that the promised land that Israel was going into, the physical promised land, was really just a mirror of the promised land that all of God's people are... are destined to go to in heaven. And the book of Hebrews is really clear about that, is that that was a mirror. It's kind of a, a, a model of what God's ultimate destiny is for us. So he says, I'm going to take you to the promised land. And as they got into the promised land, first they, they tried to get in, uh, or they almost tried to get in. They were afraid of, of the obstacles in front of them. They didn't believe God was going to take them in. And so they had to do the, the march for about 40 years in the desert. And then God led them into the promised land. And, but be, right before they went in, Moses gave the nation this warning. And the warning was very simply this. God loves you so much, he's going to give you all of this, even though you didn't work for it, even though you don't deserve it. God is giving all of this to you. Before you go in, let me warn you. Don't forget who gave you everything that you have. Don't forget who gave you everything that you have. And so, uh, and, and basically what he was saying is this. God loves you so greatly that he's giving you more than you deserve, more than you can ever work for. He's going to give you more than what you actually deserve. Do you know what the Bible calls that? There's a word. There's a Bible word for that. And that Bible word is grace. Everybody say grace. grace. We hear about grace. If, you, if you've been a part of the church, maybe you're new to the church and this is a new word for you. And, and grace, you think of grace and you're like, oh, that's the name of a, a friend of mine or uh, somebody's daughter. Uh, here's what grace means. Grace means a gift given that you have no, de that you don't deserve at all. That's what grace is, is, is undeserved favor. And so God says, uh, I'm giving all of this to you. Moses says, you're receiving God's grace here. Don't forget that the homes you live in, you didn't build. That the fields you're plowing, you didn't sow. That the, the crops that are growing, you didn't do the work to get those crops. I gave it all to you. Turn to the person next to you and say, I'm thankful for what God gives me. But I think most of us know what happened, right? Right? After a few generations, maybe one or two even, it, it happened pretty quickly, they forgot that God gave them everything that they gave them. And over a period of several hundred years, the nation of Israel kept forgetting and forgot at a deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper level that God had given them everything that they had. And at some point, God pulled the plug on the whole operation. And everyone in Israel, both in the north and in the south, that would be uh, Samaria and Judah, everyone went into captivity and had to leave the promised land. Why? Because they forgot that God had given them everything. They stopped honoring God with everything God had given them. And he took them out. Then God, because he is gracious, gracious basically means full of grace, he rescued them from captivity and, they, and brought them back to Jerusalem and gave them a second start. God always, always, always gives us a second start. Is anybody glad for that today? Amen. Yes. I love the fact that God always gives us a second start. And he gave the nation a second start. And they came back into Jerusalem and they started to rebuild Jerusalem and they laid the foundation of a brand new temple because the temple of God had been destroyed. And then after laying the foundation, they forgot God again. And a prophet named Haggai came along and he started to speak for God. And this is what the prophet Haggai said. Let's see it up here on the screen real quick. He said, now, therefore, thus, 
Yeah, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. In other words, think about what you're doing. Think about what you're doing. You've sown much and harvested little. You ate, but you have not, but you haven't, but, but you never have enough. Sorry about that. You drink, but you never have your fill. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages does so to put them into a bag with holes. Has anybody ever felt like that's your financial situation? Yeah. Isn't that something? Uh, you know, it, it could be. Uh, you, you finally get that bonus at work and you're so jazzed about the bonus that you had at work and on the way home, carrying the, bo the bonus check, your car breaks down, right? And it's like, oh, I guess I know what I'm going to do with that bonus now. You got to fix the car. Or perhaps um, you, you open up the mailbox and then, uh, you know, you, you, you finally got ahead on your bills. You paid off all your debt. You open up the mailbox and the IRS has just decided to audit you, right? And some, something like that. Or perhaps this, this is what happened to Joanne and I uh, several times, my wife and I, uh, we would be, it was always during VBS week. We would come home in the middle of VBS week and, and all kinds of great things are going on at, at, at VBS. Kids are, are learning about Jesus and stuff. We come home and the garage is flooded because the, the, uh, the, um, the water heater has broken, that kind of thing. Can I get an amen from anybody who knows what I'm talking about? It's, 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 and we get to this point where it's like, I work so hard. I, I save so much. I, I do all the things that I think that I'm supposed to do. But for some reason, I just can't seem to get ahead. Amen? You guys with me? And, and Haggai is looking at his, his friends and his fellow uh, Israelites, and he's saying, hey, guys, there's a reason for this. Now, let me just for a moment pause here. Not all of those situations are because of what I'm about to talk about. Sometimes it just happens because that's just life, okay? But I want us to consider that perhaps there might be a reason why it feels like we're walking around with a hole in our financial bag. No matter where we go, it seems like there's money dropping out of it. And this is what Haggai says. He says, you looked for much, and behold, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. Now, who's that I? Who's that I? That I is God talking to the nation of Israel. He says, you worked hard. You expected a lot. You made your plans. But when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why would God blow away your finances? Why would he do that? Because after all, we kind of believe that God is good. Amen? Amen. That he's going to take care of us. That he's our father in heaven. And, you know, that's kind of the faith that we have. Not kind of. It's the bottom line faith that we have. God's good and he's going to take care of his children. Look, look at what Haggai says. Why? That's the question we all ask. Why, declares the Lord of hosts, because of my house that lies in ruins while each of you busies himself with his own house. Do you see what's going on here? The nation of Israel, according to Haggai, according to the word of the Lord through Haggai, the nation of Israel, they did not have an earning problem. They didn't even have a spending problem. The problem they had was a giving problem. And because there was not generosity in their hearts, and not just generosity all you know, to the people around them, hey, I give I take care of my kids, you know. My, my, my kid's car broke down. I, I paid for that. See how generous I am? But that's not what Haggai is pointing out here. Haggai is pointing out that we, that his nation, and I think we can collectively join ourselves into this idea, is that instead of putting God first, they put themselves first. And, and when we put ourselves first, Instead of God, here's exactly what we're doing. We are rejecting, everybody say rejecting. It's a hard word, but I want us to grab a hold of that for a little bit. When we put ourselves in front of God, what we are doing is actually rejecting the grace of God in our lives. We're saying, I will take everything you have as long as I can ignore that you're the one giving it to me. Does anybody know what I'm talking about today? We're a lot less enthusiastic to say amen to that one, aren't we? And, and here's the key point today that I, that I want to share is that when the way I give to God's house, the way I give to God's house reveals what I believe 
about God's grace. The way I give to God's house reveals what I believe about God's grace. Now, I, I don't, look, I, I just kind of want to backpedal a little bit. I don't want to scare anyone here and, and, and basically say, well, you're less of a, a Christian, you're less of a God follower. Um, but here's what I want to do, because I, literally, even though I don't know most of you, I love all of you. I love all of you. And, and one thing that I do not want for anyone in this room, what I do not want is this, is for you to experience a time in your life where God blows away everything that you do. Amen? You guys with me? And so, so if, if God will blow away what we do, what we earn because we are forgetting him, then maybe, you know, the reason I'm here today is just to remind you, guess what? We can recover from that. We can recover from that by, by making sure that the way we give reflects what we believe about God's grace. The, the greater, the deeper you believe God's grace is, the greater and the deeper uh, you will give to God's mission. The thing that God is most passionate about is reaching this world for Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? And, and he wants us to be invested in that. And as long as we're invested in that, he's like, Woohoo! You know, he's going to be there with us. But if we are invested in our own empire, we can't be concentrating on his kingdom. And he wants us concentrating on his kingdom. That's what God's house is all about, is his kingdom. It's, uh, it's about so much more than the church wants my money. It's, it's about so much greater stuff than that. It's about this community right here, uh, San Carlos area, or wherever this is, Lake Murray area here. Uh, it's all about reaching this community for Jesus Christ. Now, how many of us would love to see these chairs filled all the way to the back row, not because the church is bigger, but because the community is changing? Amen? Yeah. Amen? Right? And yeah, yeah, we can, we can amen that, right? And, and big, a big reason why that doesn't happen in churches is because we personally do not put God's house before our house. And so uh, now I know this is kind of a touchy subject. And so what I want to do, I want to share three ways that we can grow in giving. So just kind of ask yourself, where am I at with my giving? And I, I'm not asking anyone to take a huge step in giving. All I want, all I'm asking for is take a little one. Can you take a little step? I believe, I'm convinced that best, the best growth happens little steps at a time, little decisions at a time. If we could change the degree in this room by one degree, by, you know, change the temperature by one degree, maybe two degrees. Anybody be happy about that? Yes. Yeah, I would, right? right. By two, if we lower down two degrees, I'd be absolutely happy. And, and maybe we can just do that with this subject, with this subject of giving. And so three ways. So level one, I hate to say level, but level one is this. Uh, Level one, we're going, to, we're going to practice intentional, joyful giving. Practice intentional, joyful giving. Now, here's, here's who this is aimed at. Perhaps you're sitting here today, and uh, maybe just the idea of hearing somebody talk about money and giving to the church, that makes you a little bit nervous. Can I just say, I get it. I've sat where you sat. I've been where you're at. I get it. But one thing I learned is that when I started to practice intentional, joyful giving, you know what changed? My heart changed. My heart changed. Because uh, Jesus actually says this. He says, where your uh, treasures are, there your heart will follow. And when I started to give intentional, joyful, intentionally and joyfully, my heart started to follow that and I started to fall in love with the mission of God. For some of us, the reason that you're not in love with the mission of God, the reason why, why the community is not being reached is because that's not where your heart is. And if you, if you send your treasure in that direction, guess what? Your heart's going to go in that direction. This is what Paul says when he talks about giving. He says, each one, <coughs> excuse me, each one must give as he has decided, everybody say decided, decided. in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, but for, uh, for God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. So here's what, what I get out of this verse. Number one, make a decision. Make a decision today. What percentage of your income are you going to give? Just make a decision. Say, God, and, and not from me, just have a conversation with God. Say, God, what percentage of my income 
Are you calling me to give right now? It might be 1%, 2%, 3%, 5%. It might be 25%. I don't, you know, whatever God's saying to you. Uh, but just start at a percentage. Don't start at a dollar amount. Start at a percentage. Look at the, what you made last year and then say, I'm going to give 1%, 2%, 3%, whatever it is, I'm going to give that to God's house and start there. Don't overstretch yourself because if you overstretch yourself, you're going to say, you're, you're, you're not going to be able to give joyfully. Amen? You guys with me? And so ask, basically ask God this question. What do you want me to give that I can be joyful at? What do, we, what do you want me to give that I can be joyful at? And, and then follow through. Make that decision. And don't wait till Sunday to make that decision. Make that decision tonight or tomorrow. And, and, and then from, for the next 12 months, just fulfill that commitment between you and God. Can we do that? Is that that's, that's a pretty easy thing to do, right? Right? Make that commitment. And then, and then um, if perhaps... Now I'm going to get a little personal. Is it okay for me to get a little personal? Yeah. If perhaps you look at this and you go, you know what? I can't give anything and be joyful. If that's going on in you, then here's your question. Not for me. This is your question with God. What's going on with my heart? What's going on with my heart? Because if we can't give joyfully as followers of Christ... How do we reconcile that with the fact that God gave his son freely to us who did not deserve it? You guys with me? So that's a little bit of a challenge. Now, every time God prompts us, he gives us a promise. With every prompt, there's a promise. And look at what he says here. He says, trust, or he says and God is able to make all grace, everybody say grace, abound to you so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. You know what that means? Is that when we step out on faith and we intentionally give with joy, God jumps in and he says, I'm going to provide for you. You decided to be a part of, the, the, of my kingdom going forward. I'm going to help you be a part of my kingdom going forward. There's a great promise. Okay, it's level number two. Level number two is put God first. Everybody say, put God first. Put God. put God first. Now, here's what this means. It means put God first. Put God first. So we've got all kinds of priorities with our money, amen? Yeah. A couple of weeks ago when I was here, I introduced the bucket concept to you guys, right? So we have the make your money bucket, and when we make our money, that's where our money comes from. There are basically four things we can do with the money that we make. We can spend it. We can save it. Save it. We can give it. And we can, what's the last thing? My mind just went blank. Give it, save it, spend it. Uh, I know there are four things here. I hate that when it happens. Okay, so... The, the thing is, is that where we put our money isn't just the important thing, but where we put it first. So if I decide to spend it on lifestyle first, and then I've got, um, I've got uh, uh, you know, my savings, right? Uh, I hate this when it happens. What's the fourth thing? Spend, make it, spend it, keep it. Huh? Give it. I got give it, spend it. Save it, save it, give it, give it, save it, spend it. Give it, save it, spend it. Ah, oh. all right. So whatever bucket we put it into, you know, if I, if I put it all here, but here's the deal. Like I, like I said a couple of weeks ago, the last bucket always gets the least. Always gets the least. So the way we order our bucket makes the difference on how our money is prioritized. And here's what I mean by by put God first. Take your giving bucket, make that the first thing that you spend your money on. The first thing. First thing is to give to God's house. Second thing, pay yourself. Save money. So whatever percentage you, God tells you to do, you give first. Whatever percentage he tells you to give to your house, you save that money, you put it in there. Um, and then whatever percentage that you're going to live on, you put it in the last bucket. You know what that does? Two things happens when we do that. Number one, 
God gets his share first. We put him first. We honor him. So our heart changes when we do that. Number two, it's a natural limiter on our lifestyle. Have you ever noticed that no matter how much you make, you find ways to spend all of it? Right? Right? And the reason why it's so hard to give to God's house is because we start with the living bucket or the spending bucket. That always gets the priority. And we end up making the giving bucket the last thing. And so it always gets the short end of the stick. So when we put God first, that's, that's basically what happens is we're, we're able to, to reorder our priorities. Now, how many, how many of us know uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6? Right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. It's probably the second most popular verse in the Bible behind John 3.16, right? But here's the interesting thing. Let's look it up on the screen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Now we, we say that, but you know what? Solomon, when he wrote this, he had something in mind when he was saying it. And the very next couple of verses tells us what he had in mind. Let's see the next one. Be not wise in your own eyes, Fear the Lord and turn away from evil and it will be healing to your flesh and refreshment from your bones. And then he, he continues. So let's see the next one. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. In other words, I want you to trust in the Lord. Don't lean on your own understanding. Here's how you do that. Take your wealth, whatever you make, take the very first part of it and you give it to God. This is how you demonstrate you trust God. You trust God. Let's see the next slide here. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. In other words, when you put God first, God jumps in and he helps out with whatever is last. Okay? So, so uh, that's how we trust in the Lord is by honoring him with our first fruits. For some of us, you know, you've been giving, but what you need to do is change it up and start to make that the very first thing you do. Number three, number three is this, and this final one is to present the entire tithe. Everybody say tithe. Okay, we're excited about that one, right? Everybody say tithe. Tithe, tithe. okay. So one of the things that happens in, in the church today is people say, yeah, I tithe every week. And what, what we mean by that is um, I give every week. But the word tithe actually means 10, everybody say 10. It means 10, it means 10%. And, and God wants to challenge us on our giving. 10% is kind of that area where it's like, if I give 10%, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's going to take some faith for me to give 10%. And God says, I want you living by faith. And as a matter of fact, uh, even after he brought Israel back and several hundred years later, uh, they went back into the same condition that they were in when they got exiled the first time. And the last prophet in the Old Testament, he wrote about this, and this is what he said. Will man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, have we robbed you? Or in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and contributions, he says. You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, while the whole nation of you. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. So Malachi here is saying, hey, we've been robbing God. God's saying, you've been robbing me. And the way you rob me is by not giving the entire tithe. And then, then he gives the promise. He says, and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of the hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. Give me an amen if you would love to live in a state where you don't have a need, right, right? And, and Malachi here is saying, look, the reason why we have needs is because we're not providing for the needs of God's house. For some of us, it's a matter of, hey, I just need to give. I just need to give joyfully, make that decision to do it. For some of us, uh, the decision is this, I need to give first. I need to make sure that that's the very first thing. And for other of us, it's, it's time. It's time for you to step it up, to, to move it from, from giving the percentage you decided on to the, the percentage that God's calling you to do, that 10% per, uh, uh, a number. Now, 
here's what happens. Here's what happens when we start to give the way God calls us to give. Because there's good news. There's good news. Uh, we're all adults in here, right? Okay. Do you remember? I might never be invited back after this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Do you remember when you were like eight or nine and you first found out how babies were made? And you're like, ooh, that's gross, right? But now that you're adults, you're like, oh, that's not gross at all. You know, I actually kind of enjoy that. I will guarantee you this. This is how it is with giving. When you're on the one side of it, you're like, I don't, I can't wrap my brain around that. But when you step across the line and you say, I'm going to give the way God wants me to give, there's no looking back. Because when you do that, you watch God get involved in your financial situation and do things that you could never, ever do. As a matter of fact, every one of those promptings that had a promise, that's what that promise was all about, is that God can do with your money much greater than what you can do. God will do more with your 10% than you can do with your 100%. And, and when we step out on faith like that, he dives in. That's our invitation. We're saying, God, I'm inviting you into my financial world. This is exactly what happened to Joanne and I. When I made, finally made this decision in our household, it's about 20 years ago I made this decision. And uh, for nine months, even though the math didn't work, even though the math didn't work, we were able to give 10%. We made it the first thing we gave, and we were able to give 10%. You add up all the bills, they're like, how's this working? And we started calling it God math. And about nine months into it, um, I had the bills. I got the paycheck. This is back when we still wrote checks. Um, and, and I was working it all out, and, and I, we were short. We were short. And guess how much we were short for? The exact amount of what our tithe would be. And that was a moment of decision for me. And, and I was a little bit stressed out because we are never late with our bills. We're never, we never miss a payment. And it's kind of a pride thing with me. And God's like, I'm going to work with your pride here. And so I just prayed. I said, God, you promised. Since you promised, I'm going to trust. The very first check I wrote was to our church. And I said, these two bills, God, they're yours. Because there were two bills that we had to pay. I said, those are your bills. And I put them aside. I am not kidding you. Gave the check on Sunday. On Monday, I opened up the mailbox and the IRS sent us a check from our tax return five years earlier. It was five cents more than what we needed to pay those bills. Yeah, yeah. Can we give God a little praise for that? Right? Now, now, I'm not saying God's going to make all your car payments. But I am saying this. He'll take care of you. He'll take care of you. And he will give you a reason to give him glory because he's given you the grace. For some of us here today, you're wondering, when am I going to talk about Jesus? But the reality is this. We are saved by his blood because God gave him to us. Amen? Amen? God gave Jesus to you. I don't know where you're at in your faith. I don't know if, if maybe you've taken that step of, of faith to say, I know Jesus has saved me. But if you believe that Jesus can save you for, for, for eternity, then you can certainly believe he's going to save your financial situation when you are obedient to his call. Let's pray. Jesus Christ, first and foremost... Together, we want to give ourselves to you. If you're sitting here today and perhaps you needed to hear that God cares about you enough to provide for you, I want to invite you right now to invite him into your life. Every one of us messes our lives up. Jesus came to reconcile and restore us. Just, just tell him, Jesus, 
I believe, I believe you died for my sin. I believe as I was running away from you, you were running after me. As I was denying you, you were claiming me on the cross. And if you spilt your blood for me, then I believe you will provide in every way that I need. Right here, right now, I give myself to you. Every part of who I am and everything that I own, it's yours. Because you gave me all of you. Just for a moment, keeping your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I, I want to ask you a question. Have you worried about money in the last month? If that's you, raise your hand. Father, I pray for these. And I pray, Lord, they would see your abundance as they are obedient to your call. That Jesus Christ, they would see your Father as their Father. Because you are our, all, all of our Father. And you'll provide for your children. Lord, I, I pray that you would bless everyone in here with that moment of recognizing you are building a kingdom and inviting us to participate in that. For some of you, today's the day. You need to make that dedication. You need to make that decision. If that's you, just, just pray this along with me. Lord, today I'm deciding to give joyfully. Today, I'm going to step it up a notch, just two, two degrees. I'm going to step it up. Everything I have is yours, and so I will joyfully give what you call me to give. And Jesus, we're praying in expectation to see you move in what we do, in what we give. It's in your name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.